Hello, everyone. Hi, nice to see you all. Thank you for joining us. My name is Irina. Welcome to the National Portrait Gallery's uh, Women's History Month Virtual Festival and Storytime with the DC Public Library. We are so excited to have you all here today and for you to join this program. We're gonna have a lot of fun. So before we get started, just a few reminders. We do have live um, transcript available. If you go down to the bottom of your Zoom or your YouTube link um, window, you can find the closed captions there. You're welcome to use those with this story time. And now I'd like to turn it over to a video of my friend Tara Thomas from the DC Public Library. Um, and she is going to introduce this story time for you. Today, we are proud to be celebrating with the National Portrait Gallery Women's History Month and to specifically be part of their virtual exhibit celebration and family festival to celebrate all of the extraordinary women and their portraits featured in Where There's a Woman, There is Magic, a virtual exhibit. While there are a number of extraordinary women and their portraits featured in this exhibit, we're going to take a look at one of them. We're going to look at the portrait of Julie Packard, an ocean conservationist. I don't know about you, but after that brief look at Julie Packard's portrait, I wanna learn more about her. Surrounded by all those colors, and what are all those colors anyway? Could those be plant life? Hmm, and what exactly is her role within the scientific community? Let's learn some more. What do you think? I'm gonna invite Irina from the National Portrait Gallery to speak about Julie Packard, as well as her portrait. Hi, Irina. Hi, Tara. Today, we are proud to be celebrating. So, today, we are proud I to want be to, um, I want to take a deeper dive into this portrait of Julie Packard. It's by the artist Hope Gangla. So when I first look at this portrait, the first things I notice are Julie Packard's pose, she looks so confident. She's standing really tall and her arms are folded. And there are also beautiful colors in this portrait. I noticed those. I noticed the oranges and the blues and the greens and the yellows. Julie Packard is the executive director or the head of the Monterey Bay Aquarium in Monterey, California. And as Tara mentioned, she's also an ocean conservationist meaning it's her job um, to work to protect the oceans and everything that lives in it. Can you spot anything in the background of this portrait that might live in an ocean? There are lots of fish in the background of this portrait. Just to name a few, there are some leopard sharks swimming around at the top of this portrait. They're quite big. I also see some Garibaldi fish. Those are the bright orange fish swimming around Julie Packard's shoulder. And I see a California sheephead, which is swimming around right near Julie Packard's left elbow. So in this portrait, Julie Packard is standing in front of a habitat at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and it's called the Great Kelp Forest. Kelp is the plant that you see in this habitat behind her. And the Great Kelp Forest is one of many habitats that Julie Packard works to protect in the ocean. And so now I'm going to pass it back to my friend Tara to tell you about another ocean conservationist and what she did. And she, Tara is going to read us a story. Thank you so much, Irina, for sharing more about Julie Packard her scientific work, and her extraordinary portrait. You know, learning about Julie Packard and her 
work to preserve and protect the oceans makes me think of another woman scientist, a woman scientist who worked with sharks specifically and studied other fish as well. Her name is Eugenie Clark. Eugenie Clark was an ichthyologist. That means she studied fish. And she loved to focus on the study of sharks. That's how she got her nickname, The Shark Lady. And I'd like to read you a book titled The Shark Lady by Jess Keating. I'm going to share my screen now so that you can view the illustration up close. Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. Written by Jess Keating. Illustrations by Marta Alvarez Niguez. Published by Source Books. It was Saturday and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the shark. Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with her sharks? To breathe underwater with gills of her own? More than anything, she wanted to find out. When the summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach in Atlantic City. Stuffing sticky gum into her ears to keep the water out, Eugenie dove down, down, down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled the pebbled sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean current. To others, sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugenie knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But the sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them. So she dove, this time into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know them about them all. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugenie's notebooks filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams and on the margins of her pages. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15 gallon tank was much too small for sharks but Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies, clownfish, and coral red snails. It felt as big as an ocean in her home. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie what to do. Forget those sharks. Be a secretary, be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans. And they said sharks were mindless monsters. Eugenie knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark. So again, Eugenie dove. And so now, now that we heard about Eugenie you, and her, her um, love of sharks and especially the ocean, I want to show you a video that Tara created for us. And she's going to show us how to create the ocean or the layers of the ocean in your own home. So Tara has used five ingredients that you might be able to find in your home. She's used corn syrup, dishwashing detergent, canola oil and rubbing alcohol. And with those five things, she has created the five layers of the ocean in her home. So let's watch Tara create the five layers of the ocean. 
I'm going to start with the corn syrup, which, as I mentioned, I dyed black. This represents the trench layer. Next, I'm going to pour in the dishwashing detergent to represent the abyss layer. Again, pouring nice and slow. Hi there, we seem to be having um, a bit of a technical difficulty. We'll be right with you. Thank you all so much for your patience. Um, unfortunately, we've had a technical glitch, um, but if you are signed up for our next session, it is starting in about a minute with the Washington City Ballet. We are so sorry for this glitch, but thank you all so much for coming in and listening to the story time. There will be another one at 12.45 p.m. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Bye.